our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and fail to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Friends, join with me as we read uh, our gospel lesson for today from Luke chapter 5, verses 17 through 26. We begin at the top. One day as he was teaching, the Pharisees and teachers of the law, who had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem, were sitting there. And the power of the Lord was present for him to heal the sick. Some men came to carry a paralytic on a mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. When they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd, right in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, Friend, your sins are forgiven. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, Who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, Why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Which is easier, to say, Your sins are forgiven? Or to say, get up and walk. And then you the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. Immediately he stood up in front of them, took what he had been laying on, and went home praising God. Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, We have seen remarkable things today. Please be seated, friends. This is the Lord God. <clears throat> My wife uh, and one of our other members took our, our son uh, to, the, to the store recently and we didn't do it this time because I wasn't there, but yesterday my wife and I we took our son to, uh, to Costco. And I have this tradition usually where I tell him, buddy, go ahead and grab your battle buddy because we're going to go in the car. Um, you might call it a stuffy. You might want to call it like your toy for the car or whatever you want to call it. I call it a battle buddy because I was in the military and this is what I'm used to. So I told him to grab his battle buddy and, and this is what he grabbed. He, he grabbed the penguin, right? Uh, this is Petey the penguin. Uh, you think, oh, well, what good is a battle buddy that's a penguin? It makes no sense. They're not, they don't have very sharp claws or anything. They just help them move along the ice. They have no sharp claws in the front. They, the beak is, is nice for eating fish, but it's not like they're the most deadliest creatures if they bite you. They're not like a pit bull or anything. But this is what he grabbed. And we might think, oh, well, penguins aren't that, aren't that intimidating, or what's so special about a, about a penguin being a battle buddy? The term battle buddy is often used uh, in reference to military, it's used in reference to law enforcement, but the idea is somebody who is there with you. When we think of a, a stuffy that goes in the car with our kids, we think, oh, it's just a comforting tool, it's a soothing uh, uh, tool that's used to, to keep the kid occupied so that you're not putting on TV in the car. So we look at it as a, as a form of comfort. But that's not really what a battle buddy does. A battle buddy is really not there for, for comfort. It's there for its presence. It's there to remind you that wherever you go, I'm going there too. Yes, I'll comfort you, but just knowing that I'm there, that you have a support system, that, that everything is okay, 
is what a battle buddy is for. And so you might say, well, what good is a ping one for a battle buddy? I mean, you may need times where, there may be times where you need defense. And what good is a penguin in that regard? Do you know that the penguin is a very unique creature? It mates to one mate for its entire life cycle. When, when the mothers go out and, and they go hunting for fish and they go on their journeys, it's the fathers who stick around and stay on top of the baby penguin shells that are still in there until they hatch. Penguins are the greatest battle buddy that you might think even greater than a lion because they're always faithful to those that they marry and to those that they're with. That's essentially what you need in a battle buddy. You don't need the strongest guy. You don't need the smartest guy. You don't need the swiftest guy. You need somebody that's there. Somebody that's persistently and consistently there. The friends that brought their, their lame friend to Jesus were the greatest battle buddies you can ever have. Because what they did was bring their friend who was in a desperate need to the only one who could possibly help them. And I don't know if you caught it, but Jesus looks at them and sees their faith. The collective faith of the person on the mat as well as the friends that bring them. The lengths to which they are willing to go to bring their friend to Jesus. That's a battle buddy. Some of us have 15, 20, 30, 50 really good friends. If you're my wife, you have like a thousand friends on Facebook. I'm not on Facebook, so I don't have any friends anymore on Facebook. I guess it's not official. I have probably around like five really good friends. But it doesn't really matter if I define them as like expert friends or not. The fact is, is I would go to great lengths for everybody. And that's ultimately what our lesson is all about today. Yet last week we looked at love. The Let's Go series being all about love. Today we're going to look at what love looks like. Love is loving where you're at and going the distance with the people that you are willing to share your testimony with, that you're willing to share your life with. We should, we should look at that beyond just the scope of friends and family members, but look at everybody that way. What lengths are you willing to go to bring people to Jesus? For the people in our text... It was taking him on a journey to being stopped by a crowd of people and then climbing on top of a roof that was probably made of maybe some like hardened clay and straw, breaking some of that open and creating a pulley system to lower their paralytic friend on a mat that was not made of like the toughest styrofoam or, or fiberglass or metal, but cloth, down through the roof to cut people off who were, also, who were also coming to see Jesus, just so that he could encounter the one who is the ultimate battle buddy, who's there all the time. And that's the person you get to bring your friends, your family members, your neighbors, your acquaintances, the people in your immediate spheres of influence, that's who you bring them to. And like a penguin, you show absolute faithfulness in doing so because you're ready to go the distance to do it. <coughs> Amen. We continue with our service. Please stand, friends. We confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed as it appears in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's pray, friends. Dear Father in heaven, with your gift of a Savior, you restored hope 
for our fallen world and brought glory to your name. We thank you for the good news that you have reconciled the world to yourself through your Son. O oh Jesus, Lamb of God, we praise you for offering yourself as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of all. On the cross you declare the sacrifice for sins complete. It is finished. At the open tomb you assure the world that sinners are reconciled to God, that the divide has been repaired. Holy Spirit, blessed Counselor, who use your word of truth and power to break down the barriers to our witness, including fallen mankind's natural hatred for God and Satan's wicked work among us. <coughs> Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, send us by the power of your word into the mission fields, beyond the walls of our church. Give us hearing ears and seeing eyes that seizing the opportunities you set before us to be your witnesses. Guide us, strengthen us, and bless us as we declare Christ to our world. Amen. We ask you to hear us as we pray the prayer that your Son has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you his peace. Thank you. 